Our next topic is bond energies. Bond energies are a way we can estimate the enthalpy of a reaction. If we look at the components of a chemical reaction, reactants go to products. For reactants, we need to break the bonds between the atoms and rearrange them to the products where we make new bonds between different atoms. Breaking bonds requires energy. Remember that when an electron of one atom is attracted to a nucleus of another atom, as they get closer, they go down in energy. In order to break that bond, we need to input energy. So breaking bonds is endothermic, and delta H naught is greater than zero. When we make new bonds, energy is given off. This is exothermic, and delta H naught is less than zero. The general formula we're going to use is delta H of reaction is approximately equal to the number of broken bonds times that bond energy minus the number of formed bonds times that bond energy. Here is our table of common bond energies. Please be sure to use this for calculations and in the homework as different resources might have slightly different bond energies. I want to remind you that bond energies are not necessarily multiples. The energy required to break a carbon-carbon single bond, which is a sigma bond, is 347 kilojoules per mole. Breaking a carbon-carbon double bond is not double 347. You may remember from earlier chapters, this involves breaking a sigma bond and a pi bond. A pi bond has less ability to hold the atom together than a sigma bond, so the total bond energy for breaking both these bonds is 612 kilojoules per mole. Here is a reaction where we can try to estimate delta H. This may look very confusing at the start, but one easy thing we can do is identify things that do not change from the reactant side to the product side. So let's circle what does not change and ignore it. This is known as an ethyl group, and hopefully you notice that it is on both the reactant side and the product side. This carbon-hydrogen bond is also on the product side. So when we think about what changes, we're going to break this carbon-carbon triple bond and this hydrogen-hydrogen bond, and we have two new bonds that form a carbon-carbon double bond, and two carbon-hydrogen bonds. What I recommend students do is actually write down the bonds they intend to break and form, and then look it up in the table. This is an easy way to organize your work, and just in case you miss a bond, you'll be able to easily spot it when you go back and look at what you're doing. So we are going to break a carbon-carbon triple bond and a hydrogen-hydrogen single bond. We will form one carbon-carbon double bond, so that is a negative, and negative two for the carbon-hydrogen bond energies. So let's visit the table and get our values. We see that a carbon-carbon triple bond energy is 820, and a double bond is 612. Notice that the difference between these two is not 347. One cannot do this problem by just assuming they're breaking one carbon-carbon bond and using 347. Here is my hydrogen-hydrogen bond energy and my carbon-hydrogen bond energy. When I substitute these values and work the math, it turns out that this is an exothermic reaction at minus 182 kilojoules. It may bother some students to circle what does not change and ignore it, so if you'd like, you can break every reactant bond and make every product bond. Once again, though, I recommend you write down the bonds that are being broken and formed because you may notice some simplifications. Here is how I would write this. 
you notice there are one, two, three, four, five, six carbon hydrogen bonds, two carbon carbon single bonds, and a carbon carbon triple bond, and finally the hydrogen bond. On the reactant side, we have eight carbon hydrogen bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have two carbon carbon bonds and one carbon carbon double bond. Now that it's written like this, do you see perhaps some values that we can subtract and get rid of? We can get rid of breaking and making two carbon carbon single bonds. And here, 6 minus 8 will give us a minus 2 for our carbon hydrogen bonds. So we're right back to where we were on the previous slide. The same representation. Here's another example for you, and this demonstrates the importance of Lewis structures. We need to know the Lewis structures that are going to be used in this reaction because there's a very different energy between nitrogen-nitrogen single bonds and nitrogen-nitrogen triple bonds. We need to know what is that bond order. Nitrogen has triple bonds. It's also important to recognize how many of each reactant one has. There are three hydrogen molecules, so we should make sure that we remember that there are three of them. On the product side, there are two amines. So once again, we should make sure that we draw both of them. There are no attachments that are the same on the reactant and the product side. So I will wind up breaking all bonds and making new bonds. I'm going to have to break a nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond and three hydrogen-hydrogen single bonds. And I will form six nitrogen-hydrogen bonds. When I go and get the values from the previous chart, my calculation leads me to minus 97 kilojoules. I want to remind you that enthalpy is a molar quality. Therefore, this delta H is minus 97 per 2 moles of NH3 gas produced, because there's a 2 in front of that in the reaction. It's minus 97 kilojoules for every three moles of hydrogen consumed. And it's minus 97 kilojoules per one mole of nitrogen gas consumed. So the enthalpy that we have determined is for the reaction with the coefficients as written. This brings us to our student question. What is the value of delta H if 0.33 moles of N2 gas reacts? This ratio is per mole of reaction, so we can substitute what we need on the bottom for the material that we're considering, in this case, N2. So fill in the correct coefficient for moles of N2, and you'll have yourselves the correct answer. Let's try this again, this time for 6 moles of NH3 gas produced. Once again, get the appropriate coefficient here, and your calculation will come out correctly. I'm going to ask you a bond energy question in a moment. And I will be helping you out here by showing you the Lewis structures. We want to estimate delta H for the following reaction. Lewis structures are needed. This compound, C2H2, has a carbon-carbon triple bond. There are two Br2s, and this would be your final. Our formula that we'll be using is number of bonds broken times that bond energy minus number of bonds formed times that bond energy. And I suggest you write this down as bonds that are being broken and bonds that are being formed, and then substitute your values. I'll help you a little bit by circling what does not change on each side.
Now that you've thought about it a bit, please substitute your values from the chart and give me your estimate. Here is another one for you to work out. In case you're struggling with the Lewis structures, I have written them for you. This concludes the lecture on bond energies.